Shout outs for this video go to Hornby Train Sporting and Farming, Basic Miniature Painting, Trevor Rodway, Love Minis, World of Mike Anderson, and Horlix. Thank you guys for commenting on my videos. Mind the gap. Okay, so first of all, I need to apologise to the people who normally watch my Twitch stream. Um, I do this, um, the uh, unboxings and, and, and the making, actually live on Twitch. Um, and I do each part once a month. And then what I do is I split the, uh, the episodes down so that I can release one a week on YouTube. Now, this particular pack that we received, pack two, which begins now, um, it has four parts to it and I found that this pack there really wasn't an awful lot um, to talk about it's it's quite still quite literally here are some parts put them to one side so that would for make for a very short and boring video um, so I've decided to read refilm this and I'll put some parts together when, when the episodes are short I'll try and put two parts together and uh, obviously when there's more to do then I can make I can do less parts so I'm gonna begin with um, stage four and this is stage four we have uh, a right half of the rear cylinder now uh, in one of the previous issues we received the part of the front cylinder now there will be four of these in total and obviously we can't do a lot with these until they've all come in. Um, the next thing that we've, we've received is the front disc brake and it does state all of this in the magazine um, but it has perforations in it and the reason it has the perforations is obviously once the bike is, is braking there'll be calipers. Is it calipers? Um, with, disc, uh, with a disc pad on it and what that will essentially be doing is gripping it and obviously you rub metal against metal it creates heat from the friction so these holes will just because there's air going it creates more surface area that then cools it down now that is all for that part uh, stage four however stage five begins to get a little bit more interesting and these are the parts you receive and you have some handlebars and you have um, now they call this the left handlebar grip um, personally I think it's so much more um, once we begin to play with this it really does bring start to bring everything to life now we also need for this part the left mirror which we received this with stage 3 now do not be tempted to take this off this actually isn't a protective cover um, I've heard some people mention it is a protective cover unfortunately they didn't protect it this writing on there actually says objects in mirror are clearer than they appear so this is not a, a sleeve this is the actual mirror so let's just pop this to one side for a moment and then we will uh, get on with the as such build now it says in stage one to begin, take the handlebar and the left handlebar grip, locate the left hand end of the handlebar. Both ends of the bar have a semicircle cross section. Now this is where I believe it could be a little bit confusing. If we see there, it's not a perfect circle, it is actually shaped. And then you look on the other side, it is shaped. Now if you didn't know what you were doing, you could actually pop this on the wrong way round. You see there, I think that's wrong because your grips, these are operated with your fingers. So, um, I'm going to take this down to a very, very simple level and I apologise if you're insulted by this. But first thing we need to do is position this around the correct way. And this is the way I'm going to show you. First of all, we need to look at the job that the actual handlebars do. And essentially what the handlebars will do is enable you to operate the direction of the front wheel using your hands so you need to connect this to the front wheel which is obviously in front of you and lower and you need somewhere to hold 
Now there's one one front wheel, but we have two hands. So it's possibly safe to assume that this is the part that connects to the, the wheel and these are the parts that you hold on to. So then we can do this to steer the bike. Um, we also know that because things are lower, it's going to dip down. Now, obviously, theoretically, it could go that way, but that would mean that you'd be so far forward. So just like the handlebars of a bicycle, this is the correct orientation. So now we know that this is the left and this is the right. And let me check that. There we go. So we also know from the um, from the instructions um, I'll show you written down stage 5 the left handlebar grip so because we now know this is the left and this is the right this is the left so therefore it goes on to this side more checks here we have an indicator now we know it's an indicator because it's orange orange is a color that will not dazzle other drivers but it also it's nice and bright and clear we need to indicate to other drivers if the left if the left indicator is flashing it's telling people we're going left and if the right indicator is flashing it was telling people to go right so we another check is we need this visible to road users we don't if we were to pop this onto the right hand side it would actually flash downwards towards the wheel but we're not telling the wheel where we're going we're telling other drivers another check is that the 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 the, the grips we hold on to the grip with this and we tend to operate these with the fingers if we position it on the right it'll actually go the opposite way and we'd have to do this so we know it's this way so let's just go through some of the features we have the indicator now these obviously are decorative more than anything but we have because obviously everything is we have them a lot less when you're in your car everything's all laid out on your dashboard all lovely and pretty and that's how car drivers like it on a motorbike these are a lot more compact so we have here on the left hand side we have the lights this is the light switch you press it up for high and you press it down for low where's the on off switch I ask I hear you ask I'm guessing there isn't one and it, it, I mean if there is one it'll possibly be on the other side because you don't want to turn your lights off while you're riding however in a lot of countries um, it's actually compulsory to have your headlights on at all times so they tend to be connected to the ignition switch so when you switch your engine off that will turn the headlights off um, there is an override switch every bike I've had the lights go on and off um, so there tends to not actually be a switch for on and off um, there may well be we'll find out when we do the right handle uh, right hand grip but for now I'm assuming there isn't one the switch next to that is the horn and obviously that's to warn drivers of your presence underneath that you have your turn signal and what you tend to do is pull it towards you for left indicator which is this one push it away from you for your right indicator and to cancel your, your indicator you push it and that tends to be a reset this handlebar grip won't actually do anything because this is nothing this is just to hold and then you have your clutch lever there this is uh, essential for smooth blending of the gears um, if you didn't have this, if this didn't work properly, properly, what you would do is you would bang the gears in and then the bike would go <laughs> Whereas this just enables you to smoothly blend the clutch So we're going to follow the instructions and we're going to pop this on so we have the left hand side of the, of the handlebar and What we do is we look for the flat side underneath the handlebar We look for the flat side on the handlebar grip and we just simply pop that in and it goes in there I don't know if you heard that but there's a little click I'm gonna pull this out it's very very hard to pull out I'm just gonna move my microphone in close and hopefully you'll hear that click there you go and that's in so that's now this now instantly tells us the kind of riding position that we're going to be following um, we have the we have the indicator 
which we know will be pushing straight forwards. To get that straight position, we've actually got to sling those handlebars back. So now the, the, the handlebars are actually angled downwards and slightly out. And this is a nice, nice riding position. Um, for example, if you were sitting on the sofa or the couch at home, just relaxing, watching TV, this is the kind of position you would be in. Um, so this kind of encourages that position. Um, not upright or outwards like a, like a racing bike. It's out to the sides and down a little bit. And let's say we can see that from the position of the indicator. So they'll be back a little bit. And that is complete. Now, one pi oh, sorry, I did forget one thing. Hold oh there. Um, this left indicator. Now we put that the actual stick, just like the handlebar grip or the handlebars, it's got a little flat bit. And then on there you have a flat bit. And what we do is we line that up. And there's the flat bit, there's the flat bit. In it goes. And be careful, don't force it, because if you need to force it, it could be that you haven't quite got it in position properly. So in it goes. just like that and then again we can confirm our position of the handlebars because if you look at these where the headlight is once you've got the indicator position correctly where you imagine where you would sit on on the seat this could be a really good position to look behind you this is what the in the mirror is for so you've got your arms slung down in a comfortable position and you've got a nice viewing so let's have a little look behind us so this is this is the position we would possibly be in. Uh, excuse the flash in, in the mirror. Um, but this is the position we'd probably get while we're riding it. We've got a nice view bit behind us. We're in a nice comfortable position. The indicators are forwards, so we're well, well very well visible. And we've got good access to some of our controls. Now there is one thing I noticed, and this isn't on a regular bike. Just here, we have a little button. It's a little piece of metal. Now, we know from these wires that there's two wires going into the indicator, and we have three wires going into the handlebar grip. We know, I assume that this is going to be the switch. So, this is where perhaps we can play speculation. What do we think this is? Could this be, for example, a horn? who knows so one last thing I'm going to do and it doesn't tell you to do this on the instructions but we have this flappy piece of um, of wire so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some masking tape I'm going to take a little piece of masking tape off and I'm just going to fold that end over and then I'm going to loosely position this here and I'm just going to tape that on so that the tab is flapping and then I'm going to do exactly the same again but further along now obviously we are looking after our parts perhaps in a box but can we be too careful so I'm just going to tape those wires down until they're safe when we actually need this we can just pull this I'm using masking tape because it's not extremely sticky um, it will hold down, but when we need to, it'll come off there very easily. Um, and I would just advise just sticking that down. And there we go, guys. We have the handlebar ready. So that's parts four and five complete. Um, next ish, uh, next magazine, um, we have uh, a small part for stage six, and we have uh, a part that I can discuss for issue seven so i'm actually going to do another double episode in a fortnight's time okay guys so thank you for watching i appreciate your time and um you guys have a good weekend take care bye bye okay so on to the comments section for the last video and hornby train spotting and farming rights great vid penny i want to do this but i've got two part works to do already understand what you mean um, I've got so much on 
that I just don't have any spare cash anymore. It's, it's becoming like an addiction. Um, basic miniature painting writes, awesome, really happy to glad you glad to hear you've got the passion. Trevor Rodway writes, what type of bike do you own, Penny? Now, I don't actually own a bike at the moment. Perhaps why that's why I'm so interested in doing this one. Um, but I have owned uh, two sh uh, Honda Shadow VT700s, um, both US import bikes, although one I did re-engine to a 750 engine. Um, I've also owned a Kawasaki Vulcan for a short time. Um, they were all V-twins, they were all... Um, now I tend to own a 700cc bike and the reason for that is I, I've got short legs so if I owned like a big, big bike um, I wouldn't be able to reach the ground, I would fall over. Um, so I've done really well out of the 700cc bikes. Uh, Love Minis writes, in the US each state has their rules on equipment for bike and rider. In my state, rear view mirror, always on headlight and tail light turn signals. The idea that sight of the rider is and visibility to cars are key to prevent accidents. My state does not require you to wear a helmet, but most states do. The pleated air filter allows more surface area, uh, sorry, more surface space for the air to pass into the engine and does mean clearer air um, to keep inside of the engine clean. The older a bike, the more likely the owner will change out parts to give the bike a new and different look. You are very lucky to be building this model, so it is time for you to enjoy that fact. You will build it correctly and have an awesome showpiece. Thank you so much for that, Love Minis. I really appreciate comments like that. And of course, um, it's nice when somebody adds their input, um, because my own experience comes quite literally from my own experience. Um, it doesn't mean that my, my experience is fact. Um, a lot of what I say is based on opinion. And obviously if I've gone, um, for example, in Love Mini State, I've never driven a motorbike around there, so I'm not necessarily aware of the rules and regulations. Uh, World of Mike Anderson writes, Wow, didn't know you could attach the two parts together. I'm going to use tissue paper. Great idea, mine's just in a kitchen drawer at the moment. This is the problem. We don't know how long we're going to be keeping these parts until we actually need them. There's all kinds of things that could, could scratch them, um, all sorts of accidents that could happen. And if we can just take that extra step to protect them, I'm sure we'll all reap the rewards later on. And lastly, Horlix writes, Glad you have rekindled the passion. It will be a great build. It's just a shame there's so many parts you cannot start building yet. Looking forward to seeing this being built. Being a biker myself, I would love this build, but there's no chance of this for me at the moment. And dare I say, as my current builds may be compromised shortly, eek, but I know more next weekend. Take care and have a great bank holiday weekend. Well, I did have a good holiday bank weekend. Obviously, this is uh, two weeks since the last video. Um, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Lots went on. And for a change, uh, the bank holiday weather was very good. Um, it's a well-known fact that in the UK, a bank holiday me usually means lots and lots of rain. Um, but I think for a change, we did have good weather. So, I hope the good weather continues. Um, and I will see you all again in two weeks where I will be building another two stages. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.